So hello and good out, good morning. Um, we welcome you to New Hanover County Health and Human Services Equity Matters webinar. Um, this month, we will be having a conversation with our assistant social service directors. Um, we have Ms. Vanell Walker. She is the assistant social services director for economic services. And we have Ms. Mary Beth Rupright. She is the assistant social services director for social services. So we welcome you ladies um, to the Health Equity, Equity Matters webinar. And um, thank you so much for taking our invitation to be here. The purpose of Equity Matters, um, our webinar, is to spotlight um, equity within our organization and how it's done, and also bring light to community partners and how they perform equity within our community. In addition to spotlighting the different services that Health and, health and Human Services offers and the services that our community, par um, community partners offer. One of the reasons why is because there are many services that are offered within Health and Human Services services that many people have no idea all the depth of the services that our agency provides. In addition to, there are many services that are provided by our community partners that many people don't realize that we provide. So I always like to say, you don't know what you don't know. And, we, and you don't know it until you have to go searching for that help. And when you go search if you don't know who to reach out to or know the partners that may be in the community that can help provide the services that you need, you feel stumped, you feel overwhelmed, and you feel that your issue will not be resolved. So one of the ways that we are approaching that is having our webinars so people can have more information. So when and if an occasion yeah. comes where you need help, you will already have some information and remember that there was an opportunity that you um, that you could find services. So we welcome you. We thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we will go around <clears throat> and have an introduction um, from our assistant social services directors. So I will start with Ms. Mary Beth. We're gonna play Hollywood Squares um, on my screen. Ms. Mary Beth is at the bottom. So Ms. Mary Beth, we welcome you to Equity Matters. Thank you, glad to be here, Vaughn. Thank you so much. Um, could you share with us um, how long you've been with Healthy Human Services in your background? <clears throat> I have been here for 23 years now. And um, I started off all those many years ago as a foster care social worker and um, kind of worked my way up. I went from that to a child protective services supervisor and then a child protective services program manager. And then I started this job ooh, three and a half, three, four years ago. Um, so it's been uh, a very satisfying career to embark upon. I've gotten to learn a whole lot of new things and work with some wonderful people. And um, I like to think that we've helped a whole lot of people along the way. So what was the propelling force for you to go into social services or a driving force for you to go into social services? Um, I never wanted my career to be about a paycheck. So <laughs> good thing, right? Um, <laughs> I always wanted to, to feel like I was making a difference. And that sounds so trite, but um, really, I think to, for me to feel like I was living a... Um, meaningful life. My um, eight to five had to matter and it had to matter more than just um, earn, earning some money. So I was propelled by the desire to help people. I appreciate that. We appreciate the work that you do. We are so grateful to have you at Healthy Human Services with the depth of knowledge that you have and the wisdom that you use to, to use that knowledge. So we appreciate you. So we move to Ms. Vanell Walker. Ms. Vanell is new to New Hanover County. Shout out to Philly. You know, I, I like to say uh, the city of brotherly love, the sisterly affection. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so can you share with, uh, share, share with us what brought you to New Hanover County Health and Human Services? So um, I decided to come to New Hanover County because I have been in the area, I'd been in the area about six years prior to coming here and just doing my research and hearing from uh, people that worked in New Hanover <laughs> County, I admire the fast uh, forward approach to the thinking here. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be involved in a county that looked out um, ahead of the game and, and prepared mm -hmm. for um 
things that were coming down the line. So that was uh, my main reason for wanting to join New Hanover County. And I've been here uh, a little, just two years this month. Mm-hmm. And so also with you, when we talk about social services, and because you actually um, are over the economic services side, what was your driving force to go into social services? <clears throat> wow. So my driving force to go into social services uh, is very dear to my heart because um, there was a point in time where I was the person that came in to, to ask for assistance. And so mm-hmm. when I um, was when I had to go through that situation, it told me that this is something that I want to do. I want to be able to help others. I want to be able to be there to ensure that people have that stepping stone to to get to back back to where they need to be. No one wants to walk in that door and, mm-hmm. and ask for something. So if you're coming, it's because you need it. Your kids need it. There is a reason. So I want to be that person that, that can be there to say you know, it's okay. We're going to do whatever we can do to help you get to where you need to be. I like that. I like that you say that because that is my, also my, my story. Um, I think lived experience is really important into the direction that we choose when we um, are walking in our purpose in the direction Um, when we're seeking careers. um, I always like to tell youth that I mentor Look at what you're currently going through and see where you're currently passionate about, right? So if that thing is like you love to take care of animals or you like to take care of people um, or in Mary Beth's case, she was like she had a passion for, you know, helping people. If you're if you work in church, you like to usher or you're on the hospitality committee and, you know, different organizations, look at those um, lived experiences and those passions that you have and you will definitely see those are the things that you should be doing and later in life you'll see how those connect and that actually happens with many successful people I was having a conversation with my son about um Sean Puff Diddy Combs and how he didn't just pop up being a music you know mogul he started by doing promotions music promotions on Howard University you know and that was his driving force so you can look at each person's life And the area that they're most success in, that was their passion. They started that way um, at a a younger age. And I, too, um, was that person that actually had to walk into social services and receive help and ask for help. And that that prompted me to say, this is what I want to do, because I never want someone to feel the way I felt when I was having to come through. So I definitely understand where you're saying that. So thank you both for sharing that. So when we are talking about um, the services that we provide here at Healthy Human Services. Um, <clears throat> Mary Beth, you are over our social services division. Can you share with me more what that looks like and, and, and you know, what that, what that means? <clears throat> sure. Um, well, our social work division is comprised of child protective services, foster care services, and adult services. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, as I shared, my background was from the child services side of things. Mm-hmm. I had no idea when I um, became assistant director, the um, scope of adult services and the many services they provide. That's mm-hmm. been amazing to learn about. And um, I do think it's the one area that most of our community probably is not as familiar with. I think everybody has an idea about um, CPS and foster care. But adult services, their reach is so far in terms of the continuum of what they provide to our um, citizens. We have adult protective services. We have guardianship services where we serve as the legal guardian for about 155 adults that are not able to, either they've been deemed incapable of um, serving that role for themselves and they don't have any family members. So we take on that role. We have... um, services that are specifically designed to assist people in safely staying in their own home rather than needing a facility. Never mm-hmm. knew that existed um, for this job. Um, that special assistance in-home um, services where they have a financial component that, that gives them some finances to help stay at home, as well as a case management component where a social worker helps them figure out what it is they need to, to maintain at home. We have um, in-home aid services where, you know, we have some elderly or disabled people that are able to stay at home, but just need a little bit of help doing the day-to-day things, the grocery shopping, the lighthouse housekeeping, a, a, a transportation to a trip to the doctor. 
So we have social workers that do that along with the companion and home aid that actually goes to the home and helps with those things. Um, our social workers help people that are need, in need of a placement for their mom, dad, aunt, uncle, and they're trying to figure out where to go. Our social workers will kind of walk them through that process. It is, um, it's amazing how many things that they do. And I do think that it's, it's a, um, it's a well-kept secret and we don't want it to be. We want everybody to know that th these services are out there. We, we all know somebody that, that is elderly and needs some assistance in one way or another. And um, I just wish more of the community knew about the services so they could avail themselves to the services. You know, you, you were so right. When you were breaking down the some of the services specifically in terms of adult, um, adult, say that again for me, it's adult. We just call the whole group adult services because it encompasses so many adult services. services. And I didn't even hit them all. There's even more in there. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I didn't know that you all did Guardian at Lydium. I had no idea that you um, actually would go out and actually help people in terms of grocery. You know, you're, you're right. That's not something that most people have an understanding of. Um, when they, when the, the theory, or I think when people think of social services, and I, I'm sure both of you all will agree, the only thing that people think of is either food stamps or CPS. <laughs> That's it, you know, right. in those those spaces. Um, even when it comes to Medicaid, they get that confused and sometimes they end up over at the social services, <laughs> I mean, uh, social security office um, mm -hmm. because they think that that's all over there. They really don't make the actual connection that when it says social services, and I really kind of wish that we could change our name from social services to human services because that's really what we do. We provide human services to, to our community in a variety of different ways. Um, I understand the, what social services mean, but sometimes you know you got to rebrand and give people a better understanding. And, and that's what we do. We provide human service, real life information and, um, and connections and services for people that otherwise may not have that opportunity or may be in a, someone else may be in a space of privilege that they are able to provide for themselves. But a lot of times our population does not have the financial privilege to be able to be in that space and they need someone to help them. When you have um, a senior in your home and they've been diagnosed with dementia and let's say Alzheimer's and you need help and you just have no idea where do I go to get help? You can come to New Hanover County Social Services and someone will see you and they will help walk you through that process. If you have a, a, a child that is going through different situations, if you have daycare issues, so many different things that we actually provide that, um, that we need to do a better job with just, um, I like to say, introducing to some or reintroducing to others um, the services that we provide. So I thank you for taking that time to expand more on that. When we talk about our child services, um, share with me a little bit more about some of the services that we have, because I, I want to get away from this negative umbrella that people think when we are talking about child services that we provide for social services, because it's deeper than just what people assume um, when uh, people think that, oh, people are always going into the, uh, our community and taking children away, and that is definitely not um, what social services does when it comes to child services. Right. Well, we receive about 300 CPS reports every month, um, we'll give or take a few. And the vast majority of those that we actually screen and accept, and we accept about 60% or so of those, because they have to reach a certain criteria for us to screen them in and assign a social worker. But the vast majority of those just involve us connecting people to resources. It's um, people that are you know, just like I talked about the adult services that, that sometimes people struggle with knowing what's out there. Same thing for families with children. I mean, if you have, you know, either your child has a need or you have a need, have a need and you're not quite sure where to go, a lot of times, unfortunately, that ends up in a CPS report. Unfortunately, from the outside of me, but once we're in there, it's fortunate because really we are just a connector. We just connect people to what it is they need and then we walk away. I mean, we, we make sure that they've got what they need that everybody's safe and, and okay in the home and we wish them well and move on. So, you know, what you said earlier about people just think it's, you know, taking people's kids or getting food stamps, it's so much, 
so much more than that. And that is such a small piece of what we do. We only take children into custody when we cannot safely leave them in their home. And then what I'd like for people to know as well is if they do come into our custody, our plan is always to work a plan with the parent to get them back to you as soon as possible. That's, um, right. that's because we're wonderful people and because that's the law. I mean, it's that's what our mandate is, is to try mm -hmm. to ameliorate what the problems are in the home and safely return the children. And um, our, our social worker staff are incredible. I mean, they are the most hardworking, big-hearted people you will ever meet. And nobody celebrates a family success more than our social workers. They really are, they're in it to win it. They want, they want people to be um, safe and happy and healthy. And, uh, you know, the family's goal is our goal. One of the things, um, and we're going to move to Ms. Finnell, one of the um, things I also want you to spotlight on um, is the um, awesome program that you have for our older children in the older, um, is it the older foster care program that we have um, that we work on? We have um, a foster care 18 to 21 program, mm -hmm. and we also have a links program, so I'll talk a little bit about both. Um, our foster care 18 to 21 program you know, sometimes the media highlights when children are in foster care or age out of foster care, they don't often have really great outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a program in North Carolina where if we have a child that's, that turns 18 while they're in foster care or, or left foster care, but for whatever reason landed in a not great space, they can, as an adult, choose to sign themselves into foster care from the ages of 18 to 21. Um, you know, as long as they are involved in schooling or, or they have, you can't just be in foster care and be a grown up. You have to, you have to um, actually be on a path towards something. But our social workers that do that, we have two designated social workers that that's all they do is work with our foster care 18 to 21 kids. And, you know, they help them get into school. They help them find jobs. They help them navigate this grown up world. Because I think if anybody looks back at where you were, um, in terms of being prepared to be a grown-up on your own and be successful at 18, not many of us can say that we were ready for that. Not at so, all. Um, yeah, so it's nice that we have that support system. And um, our LINCS program is for our teenagers in foster care or, or folks that have aged out of foster care that still need some help. Like when they're still in foster care, our LINCS program will help them um, we do like independent living educational groups where we look teach them how to open a bank account or get a driver's license or you know all the things that moms and dads teach their children how to do. Or should and, uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, and then the same thing for for the eighteen to twenty one or, or the eighteen and older crowd that don't want to sign into foster care. There's still a social worker available for them should they need something. They just have to reach out. That's amazing. I thank you so much for sharing all that information. And yes, it is needed. Um, and uh, I think about, I lost my grand, my parents um, at an early age in my life. My grandparents actually um, helped take care of me. Um, but by 2020, 21, I had lost my grandparents also. Um, and so, you know, it definitely was a challenge to navigate the world you know, on my own, trying to figure out, you know, how do I, you know, how do I open a check? How do I write a check? Right. <laughs> so, you know, something as simple as that. How, you know, how do I write a budget? I didn't even, I haven't had the people at the bank had to show me how to put my money in the ledger and how to subtract and add on each side. I didn't have anyone to do that because they had passed on. And so, yeah, those are really, you know, important things, how to go to the grocery store and look and see what the best prices are and how to, instead of just grabbing something off the shelves and learning how to, okay, this is how you can look and sell if you get the best deal. I had no idea, you know, and I had to get someone else to teach me that. So that's that's awesome that you all provide those services. For now, we've been talking with Ms. Mary Beth for a while, and we want to include you in our conversation. So let's talk about the services that you provide for economic services. What would you like for um, New Hanover County to know in terms of the services that you provide um, or you oversee with um, economic services? Thank you, Vaughn. So I, I oversee several economic service programs. Um, the big one, FNS, everybody knows about Medicaid, yeah. special assistance, long-term care, child care assistance, workforce family assistance, uh, crisis intervention uh, programs, 
Uh, we do LEAP and LEWAP programs. Um, we also have a team of family support specialists um, who, who help customers who come in um, facing crisis and um, with needing assistance with utility bills that may be about to be terminated, that their utilities may be about to be cut off. Um, we have two of the family support specialists who also work with uh, the child support court and the child support department um, to help parents uh, in that child support department find employment or education or um, whatever is needed to, to make sure that the kids are getting what they need. Um, with all of these economic programs that, that we have out here to offer to our um, citizens in need, I would also like um, others to think about, we do wanna make sure that everybody is getting the things they need to, to move um, forward, to get in a better place in their life. But when I think about it, um, we also think about the economic um, stability that we are putting back into our community mm -hmm. by providing these uh, services. Um, we have to think about um, food stamps and the amount of money that is put back into the economy with um, purchases from anywhere from, from big food chain stores to mom and pop shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, when we think about Medicaid and, and, and what we provide, um, what Medicaid provides to our customers, um, we have to think about the pharmacies and, and, and the hospitals and the doctor's offices and, and um, you know, all of those things that um, continues to build our um, economy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I, I would like to make sure that 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 everyone understands that we're here to help with, with any benefits that, that people are eligible for, but our benefits also play a major role in mm -hmm. um, our economic mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I have to agree with you that it is, it does drive um, when you don't have um, funds or finances going back into your community. Um, it can, you can see that in a, a direct impactful way. Um, at times it can cause your, um, in the taxes that you have to pay in your county or your city to go up because they're supplementing that in other ways. Um, and so it, it definitely is um, a, a felt impact when you don't have those finances going back into your community in such a way, even to the point where you talked about mom and pop, you know, we have a lot of, um, I like to say like little bodegas, you know, community stores in yes. our neighborhoods that actually accept um, SNAP benefits. And that actually helps because that's that's a way for that to that can, that store to stay within the community Absolutely. and people people to be able to have somewhere close to go to. Because when we talk about food insecurity and food deserts, um, a lot of that conversation is around the fact that, that people don't have access to, access to more. They really kind of say more large chain grocery stores, and they forget that we also have corner stores. Now, sometimes the corner stores don't always offer the most nutritious foods, and we understand that, and we're trying to work with them. Um, to help to be more like a healthy retailer. That's actually one of the programs I'm working on right now um, to allow our corner stores to be healthy retailers. But even still, they provide some source of food. It may not be what others deem to be healthy or not healthy, but it is it provides some type of food that source and also items products that you may need for your house. So whether it's hygiene products, whether it's cleaning products, so it's a way for you to, to drive back into the community. You stated um, an acronym that I um, had not heard before. I've heard of LAHI, or I say it LAHI, um, but what is LAWA? So that is um, assistance that um, we can give out to assist with water, a water the water program. Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. 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 Uh, so now I have, so one is for electricity, right? Yes. And, and that would so be once a light. year. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's typically usually around February in that when you all tend to um, open up applications or maybe that's just the time in my past, I used to come in. 
actually today is the today is the uh cutoff day for LIAP. Uh, okay. but that program generally starts um, in December for our elderly and, and aged and disabled and in January for the general public. And so um, let's uh, um, explain a little bit more. Um, to what is LEAP? Let, let's let someone know what LEAP is and what LEWAP is. So LEAP is a once a year um, payment to the provider to assist with um, heating costs. Okay. Um, and so it, it, Several people that we we have it now where several people don't have to apply for it. If you don't have to apply, you know, some it rolls over from year to year for our elderly people that received it last last year, mm -hmm. and also for um, households who have uh, children that's under five. Mm -hmm. But it is a once a year payment that that is uh, paid directly to the provider to assist with um, heating. Mm -hmm. uh, a heating cost. Mm -hmm. So that that's what LEAP is. And LEWAP is the uh, payment that assists with water. Costs. Okay. And How long LEWAP have y'all had the water one into? Go, no, um, go ahead. Yeah, LEWAP, um, I think it's been out for a year now. Okay. Yeah, it's been out for about a year now. Okay. And the reason why, because let me tell you, I clearly remember um, from someone who's had lived experience uh, times where I, I had came in to make an application and the only thing that they could provide you with was uh, was electricity, you know, through the Lee app. But there was not um, any assistance when it came to waters. And, and listen, K Fear Public Utility Authority is definitely getting their, their money's worth in terms of water bills in, in Wilmington. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was definitely a need. And I'm glad that you all are, have expanded that, um, that program to include water now, because that definitely can be a challenge for people um, when it comes to paying the water bill. When we Absolutely. talk about economic services, um, and you also mentioned child services, um, I heard you mention child support. What do you mean when you say child services? child care um, benefits. So mm -hmm. we also assist um, families with child care benefits, child care payments to um, for, for children to go into child care while parents work, go to school, things of that nature. So child care is definitely um, a, another uh, great benefit for our um, economy because it is keeping these daycares open um, and it's allowing parents to go out and get jobs and, and have the assistance to, to help with child care. We know that's a big expense. So, yes. so when um, someone comes to apply for child services or child care services to be specific, um, can they go to do the, is there a list of daycares that they can go to or can they go to, can they find their own? Are they restricted to specific daycares? Um, can they have multiple children um, or uh, so how does that how does that work is it a certain certain dollar amount per child um, when you when we're talking about um, daycare services for someone who needs to apply for services for their for their child or children so um, they would need to I'm sure we have a list of daycares that um, that offer um, to be a, a child care provider for um, mm -hmm. to, to receive assistance, but they can find their own daycare. They the daycare does have to be um, up to a certain star, up to a certain caliber, and um, they let us know what daycare they want. We've had some um, over the last couple of years with COVID, and um, a lot of daycares losing. Uh, a lot of their employees and loss of staff. And so there has been, um, there was some cutbacks with daycare. And so that we've seen that all over North Carolina mm -hmm. where, um, you know, there were waiting lists to most daycares and things like that. Um, I think that it's getting a little bit better now, but um, certainly the customer can find their own childcare. There is not um, 
a family cap or uh, of the amount of children that we would assist with, but they may have to pay a certain portion of the child care dependent, uh, and that will be what's called a parent fee, depending mm -hmm. on their income. So there's a whole eligibility criteria that has to be met. And so depending on their income, they may have to pay a parent fee to assist, you know, to bring that payment up to the full amount for child care. Mm -hmm. And um and also with y'all, if I if I didn't know of a daycare, but I knew of an individual that would watch my child, could that qualify? Um, is that a qualifier? So let's say um my aunt or my mother or my friend said that they would watch my child. Is that a um is that something that can, is doable? So it that's a kind of tricky question because it okay. really depends on if they are um licensed and if, if they could be a small child care home okay and have you know and, and have you know other children in their home so it doesn't have to be like the little little daycare center but mm -hmm. they need to be a licensed child care provider okay i understand i understand exactly what you're saying so not just your nana just saying you know unless nana has a <laughs> has been qualified as uh like you said a small daycare provider her home has been designated to to watch children but if right. she has not um then um unfortunately the 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 uh the services that we pro provide would preclude or exclude them from those Absolutely. particular services so i understand that when we talk about also um, um a little bit more clarity as far as lahi um is that also um do we have something in the summertime to help with cooling services or is it just only during the winter winter time um so LEAP is the once a year program that is provided and, and the time of year is provided, it's provided in the winter time for the, mm -hmm. the lump sum payment to assist um, with your um, heat and or cooling costs. Mm -hmm. We do have a SIP program, our crisis intervention uh, program that assists with uh, cooling costs in the summertime, but it has to be a, a you, there, there's a crisis situation has to be going on. You have mm -hmm. to be um, within uh, um, 48 hours of being terminated, your your um, utility is being terminated, but it is a heating and cooling um, expense. So SIP is all year long um, and it is based on heating and cooling. Now, I, I would like to just um, make sure I clear up the fact that it's not electricity, it mm -hmm. is heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if your, you know, electricity is different than your heating and cooling source, it is a heating and cooling program. Right. I get it. So because some people may have oil that heat right. their um how um, they heat their home. So Absolutely. I understand that. Or some people may have gas. They right. may heat their house. So it's not specifically to just um our electrical company. It's whatever is um the whatever services food. that is causing to yeah to, that's allowing you to heat and cool your house so right. i get exactly what you're saying thank you for um for clarifying that because the, the way i did say that it did seem that it was specifically only for electricity and it's not just for electricity it's for heating and cooling um of your your home so i appreciate that what is what are services um so in any one of you can answer this question um um, what are services that you think that uh, that we can do better with in terms of serving our community? Are there areas that you think that we we need to be just a little bit more stronger with um, when we talk about serving our community through an equitable lens? So I'll take a jab at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the uh, the things that we've recognized um, is that we know that we want to meet our customers where they are. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at services that we could be um, doing better, we we are addressing those areas and we are working very hard to start um, outreach uh, to different areas of the county to mm -hmm. ensure that that customers that can't get in or may not have um, access to apply online, mm -hmm. that we are um, able to pop up uh, in, in their areas um, to be able to, to meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, over 
since the pandemic, so much has changed about um, the way in which you you can apply for economic services. Mm -hmm. And so there there are several ways. Uh, So I think we are already on that path to to meeting the customers where they are. You can apply for benefits online, by telephone, um, by by sending um, an application in through email, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are several ways in which people can apply for benefits that, um, that five years ago, they were not able to do. So we've Mm -hmm. recognized uh, the areas in which we need to, to, step up and, and and be more out and meeting the customers where they are. And we're working on um, implementing outreach programs to, to do so. So that's what I would say about economic services. Mary Beth, you, mm-hmm. you want to add? I was kind of going down a similar line. I just was going to say that I feel like we need to maybe up our game with our outreach. As, as I said earlier in this, mm-hmm. um, Zoom meeting. Um, I think a lot of people don't know all of the great things that that we provide, particularly in our adult services area. So, mm-hmm. um, just continuing, we we've, we've used our New Hanover County Communications and Outreach um, folks several times to kind of spread the word about some of those programs. But it's something we definitely need to just keep doing because I, I do feel like there's still a lot of people that don't know that we're there to lend a hand in, in some of those difficult areas. Yeah, and the purpose of that question is because a lot of times, um, if you don't review, if we don't always take an internal look, um, it how are we going to be better? How are we best at serving our community if we're not evaluating our own selves and saying, okay, we see that this is an area that we need to get stronger in. Um, it's great that we get the feedback from our public, but we also need to internally look and say, okay, you know what, I see this is an area that we need to be stronger in. I think um, I think we're going doing great in this area. It's always good when we spotlight the, the great things that we're doing, but we also always have to have that self-evaluation and saying, okay, we know that these are areas that we need to grow, become stronger, and bring to a level of excellence in the same way that we have it in other areas. So though that's the, the purpose of asking that question, because we know that we want to let our um, community know that we're transparent and that we know that there are areas that we need to work on and that we're not not looking at those things. We are looking at those things. I mean, so with your help, we get stronger, but internally, um, the best way to take care of home is to take care of home. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and and you can't do it if you're not looking at, you know, what we're doing internally to help make those things better for our community. Um, and so we're going to wrap, go to our next question. And so we're talking about health equity. Um, and we basically all kind of just touched on it in so many ways. Um, Mary Beth, when you think about health equity, what is your definition? What what is What makes you think or how do you put in your own words and how you do health equity in the work that you do? You've already kind of touched on it in so many ways, but we just want to kind of drive down a little bit more into when we're talking about health equity. So in terms of how we do it, I would say that it's, it's our driving force. It's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, when we work with families and children and adults, we are really looking to Um, make sure that they have the opportunity to be at their best, whether it be their mental health or their physical health or their social and well-being need. It is what drives everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you hear us throw around words like case plans or service plans, it really is just the roadmap that we create to help people achieve that optimum level. Um, And uh, we, as social workers, one of the things that we do is advocate for people to get the services that they need. We um, spend a lot of time identifying the gaps that may exist for individuals and just in general for folks. And then we help people overcome obstacles to receive those services. So it really is um, kind of that undercurrent in all of our work. Mm -hmm. I agree. What about you, Ms. Bennell? I'd say the same thing. In all the uh, services that that we offer or we provide uh, through the economic services, it it is touching on all the social, you know, determinants of of health. Of, of mm-hmm. health, you know, it is. and so uh-huh. you think about the um, safe living standards of someone. So just to give an example, um, our um, crisis program. Mm-hmm. 
definitely reaches out and 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 when you look at that and you drill down on it it helps people in safe to to be able to be in a safe living environment Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is if it is 98 degrees um, and you don't have access to your air conditioner and you know you might have a child you might have asthma you I mean you know elderly people and and you're not going to have access to that then that is putting you you know your health at risk Mm -hmm. so when we think about the different um programs that we provide and services that we provide we are really already drilling down to um health equity and and Mm -hmm. and what it takes Um, we want to make sure that everyone have the same opportunities as others I'll give you another example of, you know, I may live in a neighborhood that doesn't have the best doctors. However, you know, I have Medicaid. So um, we provide transportation, social services provide transportation to Medicaid clients to -hmm. make sure that people can get to the doc, the same doctors that someone else may be able to get to. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. when you think about the different programs offered, Absolutely. We are trying to make sure we are covering, you know, all areas to to assist with health equity. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I think that when we talk about social services, whether it's the economic side or whether it's the social services side, um, the foundation and the root, the actual basis of social services is truly equity. It, that it's it's that's it. And it's not, it, you talk about health equity. It, we we like to say the three P's of health equity, which is people, places, and partnerships. Right. So when we talk about health equity in social services and in economic services you got to have your people. So you got to make sure that the people are um, in place and having that conversation with them and it's specifically what they need. And within you, and, and when we pull in social services side, it's the places, it's what's happening in the environment, what's is happening in the home, what's happening in the school, what's happening that is possibly causing those social determinants of health, right? And people not being able to have the quality of life or the optimal type of life that they need to have. And then it's P, the partnerships. What partnerships are are in place that we can, because as an agency, we can't do everything. So we have to know who are those partners in place that we can drive our community to and households to that can help us with those things. So the the basis, people, places, and partnership is what social services does. We look at our people. We make sure that the place that they're in, the environment is in an equitable state of um, equitable state. And then we try to drive them to partners if we don't have it, that will actually help them. And when we talk about social determination, determinants of health, we we look at all that. And so to make some understand what social determinants of health are, because we don't want to use terms that that people really don't understand, you know, social determinants of health are those driving forces that impact a person's life. So that could be your education, that could be your housing, your employment, income, child experiences, your access to services, things that are in your community. That's what we're talking about when we say social determinants of health. What are those things that are impacting your life that prevents you from having a self-sustainable or self-efficacy, right? So you can actually live in the best quality of life that is important to you. And the foundation of what social services does is they provide that. And when we, I think we in New Hampshire County probably do a little bit better job than some, you know, we like to toot our own horn. (laughs) But I think that that was something that um, you brought up earlier, um, Vanel, that I didn't, um, I didn't talk about is that I really do think that New Hanover County is one of our more progressive counties um, within the state of North Carolina. We're a leader. We've won many awards um, in how we provide services in terms of our health department and Healthy Human Services Agency. We don't do what we do because we're trying to win awards. We do what we do because we care. And because we care, that care is seen through excellence and that excellence then manifests itself through awards. That's just how that is. But we are a lot further in how we think about our community, how we think about our people. We don't look at our people in the community as it's a they situation. We look at it as it's in our situation and how we approach what we do because it's an ecological impact. Am I correct? So if something happens to me, 
it happens to Ms. Vanell. If something happens to Ms. Vanell, then it impacts Ms. Mary Beth. So we, we look at things from an ecological approach of how it's impacting the person because we all play a part to each other in so many ways. So I like the fact that both y'all drove down and gave us that information. We have one last question when we're talking about health equity. Um, and we, you've already gone into how you prioritize health equity in the services that you deliver. Is there anything that you all, like anything, any nuggets that you all wanna let the community know that's happening or that's coming, um, just to kind of give some shine, or are there any uh, workers that you want to shine out and bring some light to about the things and the services that they provide? But this is your opportunity to just kind of celebrate and talk about some of those successes that we are um, doing here at Health and Human Services. Um, let's, let's go with Ms. Mary Beth. Well, I would like to shout out all 145 people that are parts of the social work division. We have we have an incredible staff that um, that are smart, capable, lead with their hearts. I mean, I'm I'm proud of all of them and the great work that they do. And I think that they do a fantastic job of representing us in the community. Um, they're who they're who see us. Um, they're the people that knock on your door or go help you. And um, I, I get um, not as many as I would like because I think people don't take the time to reach back out and shout out when somebody does something good. But I will tell you, when people take the time to do that, it means a lot to our social workers and, and all, all through the levels of management. Um, we get some really um, heartwarming thanks about how our people are out there touching and changing lives and supporting and helping. So um, I'll shout out all of them. They do great work. And I'll say that April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Yes. Um, so, you know, that proclamation, that, that designation for a month is just to put out there that it's everybody's job to keep children safe, um, right. not just that of DSS. So do what you can to support your um, the children in your community. And um, I think that's it. You know, something that I've been to, um, to spotlight while we were talking, Mary Beth, is that people don't realize that some of our social, serv our social workers um, are not just at Healthy Human Services. We have them in different locations. And, and so don't we have like school counselors um, in, um, through um, New Hanover County or am I incorrect in terms, do we have school, th school therapists or school social workers? So New Hanover County Schools employs the school social workers, but health okay. does employ um, the school mental health therapists okay. through basic schools. And then many of them are licensed clinical social workers. So yes, to answer your question. And then of course, New Hanover County in general has more social workers than just health and human services. And we have a wonderful senior resource center um, that does a lot of great work and they've got social workers there. Um, I'm going to stop there because I'll forget. I'll forget an agency that has social yeah. workers, but we haven't cornered the market on social work. But uh, but we do, I think, have the most social workers under under our uh, piece of the pie. Yeah, I have to agree with you because I think a lot of times people do think that we all social workers within the county are under New Hanover County Health and Human Services, and their social workers, at, as you stated, at Senior Resource Center, their social workers at the community. Um, uh, Justice, uh, yeah, Community Justice Center with our youth services, juvenile justice services. So they're positioned in, in various, um, right. under the various enterprise or agencies, if you see various agencies in those areas. So they're not just at Healthy Human Services. Um, sometimes the questions that we get, um, we're not able to answer those questions because they don't directly relate to Healthy Human Services. Um, those questions actually go to another agency. So if um, if you have questions that we don't answer them, it's not because we don't um, we're ignoring them. It's just that they don't apply to us. Those questions actually go to another agency and how they could um, to take care of those things for us. Ms. Vanell, um, what is it something that you would like to shout out and to let people know about when you talk about economic services uh, with Healthy Human Services? So I'd like to shout out all of economic services uh, from the um, 
a customer experience team who handles all of our customers walking in the door and mm -hmm. um, all of our customers call and ask questions to our trainers that train our staff um, to be as proficient as they can be. Um, to the staff that actually do this hard work day in and day out to make sure that they are providing timely benefits to customers that apply and the supervisors who oversee that to make sure we stay mm -hmm. on the right path and the managers that make sure that 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 New Hanover County continues to shine and be talent be timely and give out accurate work you know give out accurate benefit amounts um is there has been a huge change um over the last couple of years from being in the um public health emergency to mm -hmm. what is happening now and everything going back to um, business um, prior to uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. And I was here, I've been doing this for 27 years and COVID was so impactful mm -hmm. that I really don't remember business prior to COVID. With that said, everyone um, in economic services has to be retrained and 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 so it has not been easy and they have worked very hard to 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 continue to get this training to get back to uh pre covid uh rules and regulations and they've done that and also continue to provide timely benefits mm -hmm. to our customers so i just like to give a huge shout out to all of uh economic services <laughs> yes yes I, I have to agree yeah I think that our agency overall when we talk about he economic services and social services um we really do work hard they they work very hard to make sure that the customer is heard that the customer is seen that the customer is valued and that the customer knows that they belong Absolutely. And that is very important to the core values of New Hanover County and specifically in New Hanover County Health and Human Services, that we amplify our values and let people know that when you come in, you're just not another person that's just asking for services. We see you, we hear you, we appreciate you, we appreciate you, we value you and you belong, you're ours. We're going to do everything that we can to take care of you the same way that we would take care of a family member. Um, because we want to make sure that you walk out our door better than you were when you walked in. Because you came to us for a need. You would not come to us if you did not have a need for services. And we want to make sure that those needs are met. One thing before we close that came across my mind is, um, when we, um, is our homeless services, um, which um, do we do we provide services for our homeless population? How does that work? Um, just just to find out real quick. Well, yes, um, our homeless population um, have the um, rights and abilities to apply for all of the economic services that that we provide. We do have um, a task force, and I cannot think of the Mary Beth. Do you know the official name? It's under the. It's under the Health and Human Services umbrella, not not our, not, right, health not, health not health DSS, health. but Health and Human right. Services. Right, mm -hmm. five social workers that are doing the homeless outreach and intervention, and there's there's a special name for it, but it's escaping me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm 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 also I'm with you. It is the street outreach program. If I think it's something yes. something to that effect. Yeah. Yes. Um. And so yeah, there are specific. So because the question came up, and so um, I didn't want to not answer that question. We do provide services uh, for our um, homeless um, individuals and um, people who are in that that need. Um, of course, like with anything, um, there are stipulations, there are requirements, and there are guidelines, and we can discuss that and, and, and make sure that um, I bring them on at, a, at another occasion to, to give more information about those services. But we do provide services for our homeless population. Um, but as I stated, that um, we have a, spe a specific team um, that handles that and that they can give you more guidelines and more information, and that information will come on what those requirements are and how um, people can meet eligibility in order to participate in those services. So um, I didn't, like I said, that came up and I didn't wanna just kind of not answer that question. Um, so if we don't have anything else, do y'all have any final ado's that you wanna say? Well, and there's, um, I think three questions in the question box there. 
Let's see. Um, is there a county publication that, that you can tell us about that spell out these benefits um, in terms of our, our county benefits um, that we have? Do, don't, I think we have flyers um, that are well, down. We, not, to, not to over talk, but we do have a Health and Human Services website. Um, and, and you can locate that if you go to New Hanover County and kind of drill down to our department, or you can, it's a standalone website as well. And it does a good job of touching on all of the services that we provide throughout economic services and social work services. Um, and we spoke about the, um, in the question, we spoke about emergency um, services. Um, and yes, the emergency services are announced to the public. Um, we tend to use media. We tend to use our social media as in WWAY, WECT. Um, and we also put it on our website and we also put it on social media. And we also drop it in all of our county bu um, buildings and send it out to our community partners when we talk about emergency services. Um, we actually have a huge billboard that is on um, South College and Oleander by, by Trader Joe's where it talks about LIHEAP. Um, so I saw that the other day So uh, or um, that you can apply for. So yes, we do um, publicize um, when emergency services um, are when we had ERAP and the, um, there was money for ERAP at that time, we made sure that the information uh, was publicized into our community. ERAP does not have funding at this time, am I correct? Um, right. Right, so I, um, that is one of the reasons why we didn't mention that because it does not have funding at this particular time. Um, but that is a service that we provide when monies are available, but they're not at this time. Um, so just to let people know, and ERAT specifically helps people with rental assistance, am I correct, uh, Ms. Vanell? Right, rental assistance and utilities. And um, it was a time... Uh, limited program. So it's mm -hmm. not like we're looking for funding to come back in to continue that program. Mm -hmm. It is actually closed at this point. It's closed. Okay. Thank you for giving uh, more clarity on that. So those are ways that we actually um, provide for as far as um, letting people know about um, emergency assistance. Um, and we also talked about um, our relief um, in terms of bringing relief during the summertime. So um, yeah, so we appreciate the questions that we have and we were able to answer those questions for you. Um, I thank you both for taking the time to spend time with us today to talk about health equity, talk about the services that Health and Human Services provide. We appreciate you both. We appreciate your leadership. Um, your compassion, your empathy, your grace, and how you do what you do. Um, I want to shout out our both of our directors, um, or our director, which is Donna Faco. Um, we appreciate um, how she leads. We appreciate Tanya Jackson, who is the director for social services. And we appreciate Ms. Tafana Bradley, who is actually our county manager, our assistant county manager over um, our Health and Human Services Agency. So with their leadership, it allows us to help do the things that we do. And so we appreciate all of them. We appreciate those who watch today. Um, if you have questions in the future, just send those things over to us. We'll see if we can get those answers to you. Next month, we are going to be spotlighting mental health providers. Um, here in New Hanover County. And um, so giving you some understanding, mental health is a, a really important topic. A lot of people are going through challenges and we need to know how to connect to mental health services and, um, and who those people are who are providing services. So we'll talk about that um, in April and then May, we're back at Healthy Human Services and we will be talking about um, and meeting some people um, that are integral to Healthy Human Services and to our county. So we appreciate you all again. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful remainder of your day and a great weekend ahead of you. And happy Easter <laughs> for those that celebrate. For those that celebrate, happy Easter. For if you don't do Easter, happy spring. <laughs> for Thanks, Vaughn. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Y'all have a great afternoon. Be blessed and talk to you soon. All right. Goodbye.